let's get this one started as we serve all the best up right for you. We will show you the goals, the double plays, and the nice relays to the plate. You are out. Sports Night is next. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sports Night. I'm Joe Young. And I'm Howie Shiro. Man, man, the spring, the spring season is going quickly. It is. It it's is going indeed. so quickly. I'm so glad that we got that final play in, the, the relay yep. uh, from Ruddy to Christy yep. to Mellum at the plate to yep. get that out. Yep. Because um, it's not in the video highlights of the game. And they had some tremendous defensive plays they in did. that uh, game that, that uh, we can talk a little bit about it, but they didn't make the, the highlights, unfortunately. But the Cardinals had given up uh, bases loaded, nobody out to start the second inning, down yep. one nothing. And in three pitches, they went from bases loaded, nobody out, to three outs out of the inning with no runs scored. It was Crazy. it was very impressive. Uh, but we are going to start by talking about the baseball team. Very busy, both baseball and softball teams, uh, as they try and get their last uh, handful of games in in these last couple of weeks. We start with the baseball team. Cardinals on the road last Tuesday, visiting conference-leading Rogers Royals. The Royals were 7-1 and in league play, and they scored double digits in four of those games. They would definitely be tough to tame. The Cardinals were coming off their first shutout loss of the year, so they were eager to get their offense back. Back on track. Jacob Maddock kept the Royals' high-powered offense in check most of the game. He fans Connor Hampton in the bottom of the first inning. And the Cardinals uh, are actually able to get on the board first. Top of the second, Zach Novak with a grounder to the left side. Jaden Kopp is going to score from third in front of the throw. Coon Rapids is up one to nothing. That score holds until the bottom of the fifth. Max Robinson with a seeing eye single up the middle, just out of the reach of a diving Sammy Lee. Two runs are going to cross the plate, and the Royals take the lead 2-1. Turned out to be all they would need. They do get an insurance run in the sixth, though. Runners at the corners, and Cops throw down is going to center field on a hop. Nolan Geardis scores easily to make it 3-1. Cardinals fall back to 500 with the loss, but the bigger concern most likely is just one run in two games to start a busy week because they had been shut out on Monday night. Yeah, their, their, their offense has not been performing the way that obviously they want to. Their pitching has been has been performing. Uh, defense, too, a little bit uh, left suspect, uh, has as, been. as we'll talk about in, in a little bit. <laughs> it, it has been, to, to be sure, and, uh, you know, we talked a little bit uh, – couple more games to, to talk about to end last week yep. uh, that led to the kind of their frustrations. Uh, they got a win in nine innings against Spring Lake Park on, I think that was on Thursday. Um, and they, you know, only three runs, and they but they have walked it off at home against a conference opponent. That's a, that's a nice feeling for sure. Uh, Danny Scheller, uh, two for two, had a couple of doubles, scored a run. Uh, Myrie had a couple of hits and a couple of runs scored as well. Uh, gets them to seven and six on the year, uh, feeling pretty good. But then on Saturday, they go down and take on Washburn and they hit the ball well, but right at uh, Miller's defenders and they end up losing five to two, left some guys on base. Just opportunities that they have had and given themselves uh, they're pitching again, giving him a chance to uh, to win. As, as Robidoux took the, the loss, he gave up uh, just a couple of hits and one run uh, in his two innings of work, but he ends up being the one uh, on the hook for the L. Yeah, he was, unfortunately. But they uh, did open this week's play with a night game at Wintercrest, hosting the Minnetonka Skippers. Both teams came into the game at 7-7 seven and seven and hoping to make a strong push in their last few games of the season. Cardinals' offense has been struggling to score, and that didn't change against the Skippers. Jacob Maddock threw pretty well, all things considered, but this is a pitch he wished he could have back. Minnetonka pitcher Ethan Binder drives it over the fence in straightaway center. A two-run shot with two outs in the top of the first start of the scoring, but that was all the run support Binder would need. But the Skippers get some more insurance in the fourth. Tyson Mahadi bounces a single pass drawn in in 12. That will score Hudson Poole from third. Minnetonka up 3-0, all three runs unearned. Cardinals only managed two hits in the ball game, but they both came in the bottom of the fourth. Tommy Dutton had a leadoff double. And Zach Novak comes through with this two-out flare over the second baseman. Dutton will score easily. Now the Skippers are going to add to their lead with two out in the fifth. Poole with a single to center. Binder will round and score. 
and Minnetonka will skip out of town, handing the Cardinals a 4-1 loss. Yeah, and, and so the, the struggles offensively continue. Just one run uh, against the Skippers, and, and really they were uh, – not even threatening nope. throughout the rest of that game. Uh, Binder just kept him off balance all game long. Uh, so that's got to be a concern. But, yeah, three, three, four errors last night uh, five, in the field. It, five errors. Uh, so it could have been much worse considering how many errors. I thought Jacob Maddock looked phenomenal. Uh, I did as well. Ness came in and had a solid inning uh, in relief. but Two hits. Can't, it's not going to get the job yeah, done. You, when you're if you're hits. only getting two hits, you're, you're not going to win many ball games. Um, and, and you can't make that many errors in the field. You just can't do it and expect to go deep into the playoffs. Still a couple of games to hopefully get things straightened out, but a uh, tough one today. They are hosting Maple Grove. Uh, Thursday, they are at Park Center. And then a uh, handful of games next week to round out the schedule. Softball team also started against Rogers last week. It did not fare well for uh, the softball squad either. They lost to the Royals by a 6-1 to one score. There it is. Maya Ruddy was one for three, hit a home run, but that was the only score of the game for the Cardinals. They follow that up with just getting two against Spring Lake Park and giving up 10. Chloe Christie had a home run in the game against the Panthers, but uh, they fell well short uh, and fall to six and nine. Friday night, a special night for the Cardinal team as they hosted Youth Night under the lights at Aspen Park. The Cambridge Isani Blue Jackets came in a game below 500, and while they didn't score a ton, they also didn't give up many runs. It would be a tough test for the Cardinals group trying to get their offense back on track. Blue Jackets had four hits and a walk in the first inning, but they're held to just a single run. Clara Rawson rolls it up the middle, and Tatum Kosteka scores in front of the throw from Pacey Olsen. But uh, defense did a great job in this one for the girls, as we talked about before. Elena Safranski allowed just one base runner for the first three and two-thirds and just one hit through five innings. Her squad kept getting hits in this one, too. They had 16 hits against Cardinals. Peyton Vanderlee single in the fifth got Amaya Polzine to the plate. It was 5 0. Biggest hit of the night, though, catcher Haley Schmidt had the biggest hit. Grand slam to center in the top of the sixth. All smiles in the visiting dugout. They were up by nine. Cardinals do get their offense going, but it takes until the bottom of the sixth inning. Ryan Mellon down the line to left. That'll score a pair. It's just the start of a nice rally for the Cardinals. The Cardinals had five hits. In that inning, Layla Myers shot to right, drives in the fourth run of the frame for the home team. Unfortunately, a questionable call on the bases stopped the rally in its tracks. Cardinals had a little something cooking again in the in the bottom of the seventh, uh, but unfortunately, that's as close as it would get, and they lose that one nine to four. And uh, it was a fun game. It we was, saw, you know, we we saw the the. The, the relay, the three college-bound seniors yes, that was, combining that was to, to gun that girl down at the plate. That was, uh, I think, still in the first inning. Uh, or, no, that was part of that 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 uh, second inning. Right. When they, they – was it the, no, it they wasn't did, the part of the, no, because they the did second get out of, inning a couple of times. They the got the out second of inning, full full bases loaded, nobody out. They get a strikeout. The next pitch, which was a called strike. Back pick to get the runner off of third base. Next pitch, I don't remember if it was a strike or a ball, but they throw it to first base, and they get the girl off of first base in a rundown, and they hit her off at second base. So you go from bases loaded, nobody out, to – Get back to the dugout in three pitches. It was it's it was very crazy. it was very it was fun crazy, to see. But it was a, it was a great game. It was you know it's just unfortunate that they had, they had scored nine runs early on them and and they couldn't make that comeback. They got that four runs in the in the inning, but just couldn't come back and after falling nine four. Well, and again, you know, they got the offense going a little bit. They would they have did. liked to have seen it more. Well, they definitely got the offense they've been looking for on Monday when they uh, hosted the Brack Mustangs. Uh, they stampeded the Mustangs, 16 the Mustangs. to 1. Uh, Annalie Anderson got the win, four innings pitched, gave up just one run, six strikeouts and just a couple of walks. Chloe Christie, two for three, had three stolen bases, three runs scored. That's the top of their order, by the way, the, the first four there. Chloe Christie, Ryan Mellum, Pacey Olson, and then Layla Meyer. Uh, between the four of them, 
they had 10 hits. That's pretty nice production from the top of your order. Got a couple of girls further down that were getting the job done too. Maya Ruddy was three for three, had three stolen bases, had a double, couple RBI, three runs scored. Ava Kellis, perfect at the play, two for two, had a double, a stolen base, and RBI scored twice. Now, can they keep that going? That, that, that is would be, the question. That would be nice. That would be uh, nice. They are at Osseo um, today. No, they're hosting Maple Grove today yep. at Osseo on Wednesday yep. and then hosting uh, Elk River Zimmerman on Friday. That is senior night it under is. the lights. And Howie. We'll be there. That one is over at Sand Creek. Let's come out and show some support uh, for the ladies as they wrap up their regular season. Yeah, looking forward to doing a game over at Sand Creek, too. It's a lot of fun doing, doing games from over there. Well, the tennis team is hosting a first-round section match today after wrapping up the regular season last week. On Wednesday, they traveled to Dotino Grace for the Northwest Suburban crossover match. Cardinals were actually supposed to face Osseo, but if they had played them in the regular season, they switched it up so the Cardinals and Eagles could take the court instead. Cardinals had a great season and they were looking to finish strong. Sophomore Cooper Held has been fantastic at first singles and he's gotten stronger all year long. He's in complete control against Sawyer Carlson, winning easily in this one, 6-0, 6-0. Move over to the far court. Ryder Held at second singles. He had a similar success against Kiet Trong. Strong cross court that Trong can't handle. Held on his way to a 6-1, 6-0 win. Austin Hacker is such a great story. Just a second year player, had a 15 match win streak until about a week ago, and he chalks up another W against Totino, winning 6-0, 6-1. Unfortunately, the Cardinals streak ends there. Some good points and matches further down the line, but all of them end in the Eagles' favor. Nathan Yang with great court control on that point, but he loses 3-6, 0-6. First doubles, Blake DeGroat teaming up with Will Wagner. You can see the power coming from the back line for Totino. Wagner able to win the point with a nice drop shot, but they going to fall 1-6, 3-6. Second and third doubles fall in straight sets as well. Both close. Hiramasaki, Hiramasaki, sorry, and, and Heverin lost 4-6, 3-6. McCarthy and Lutke lost in the first set, break this in a tie break at the second, 2-6. And unfortunately, they're going to lose 4-3 would be the score. <laughs> Hiramasaki. Yes, Hiramasaki. Hiramasaki, yeah, I kind of yeah, like that. Yeah, well, <laughs> You, you stopped. You stared well, at it. I've been practicing. Still, I've been practicing it too, and I, I just I wanted to say it right. Awesome. And then and then Joe, and we're still getting Joe, Joe was playing with me and, and mispronouncing it a few times before the I show. Would, I would you never would do, do that to I me. Never and do so, such of course, you got in my head. Well, the Cardinals wrapped up the regular season, taking on my alma mater, Southwest, and it really didn't go the Cardinals' way. They get swept by the. Indians, I mean Lakers, yeah. whoever <laughs> Always they the Indians be. to you. Uh, Ryder held, lost in three sets. Uh, a strong battle after he, he lost the first set 6-0. He came back and won 7-5 and then lost the deciding set by a 5-7 score. Tight match as well for Will Wagner, as you see. I mean, 7-6, he wins. Or 7-5, he wins. 6-7, he loses and then loses in the... In the tie break by a 9-11 score, you don't get much closer than that. A very close three-set loss for DeGroat and Hirsamaki as well. Nice job. Uh, Ditta and <laughs> McCarthy uh, lose that second one. I mean, both both of them very close, 5-7, 6-7. Uh, in a straight sets loss, you don't get much closer than that. So they are, uh, we are shooting the show early, so they are over on the court as we speak. We're hoping the best. Uh, the Cardinals, the number six seed, Likely going to get the win over the Park Center Pirates, but then uh, tomorrow being Wednesday, uh, they will be the winner goes to see Maple Grove, and that will be a significant test. Uh, should be interesting. We saw them against Maple Grove the first match that we did. We did, we like, did. Uh, first week of the. Yep. It might have even been the season opener. I think it I might think have been it, uh, because we had that weather late in March. All of a sudden, oh, yeah. surprise! Big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, may have been the season opener of the second match, but that was against uh, Maple Grove. They ended up getting swept most of those in straight sets. Yep. It'll be a, interesting to see how much closer it is. The lineup has certainly changed a little bit. Guys have gotten great experience, but, uh, you know, Cooper held what a, what a great, 
progress oh, he has he shown has. No throughout doubt. the season as a sophomore in that just jumping up from third to first singles uh, from last year to this year, and he's had a lot of success. Austin Hacker, as you talked about, uh, one of the great stories, had a 15-match win streak. Amazing. Just a second-year player. He started last year uh, on the B squad, worked his way up to JV. I think may have touched the varsity lineup right at the end of last year, and he has been a fixture at third singles this year, so that is great to see. Uh, the individual tournament ta will take place in a couple of weeks. Uh, track and field teams had the true uh, team section tournament last week out in Elk River, and uh, the boys did not have the kind of success they have had the last couple of years. They finished in fifth place, though, very respectable, middle of the pack, Couple of first place finishes for Kaijan Cummings Coleman in the 100 and 200. Not huge surprises. Dennis, first place in both the shot put and the discus. Uh, respectable places there. Four by 200 meter relay team also had a first place finish. Uh, some other notable finishes Barker, uh, fourth place in the pole vault. Aluka, fourth place in the triple jump. Aloysius Neopan, fifth place in the long jump, and Jerry Freeman, fifth place in the 400 meter. On the girls' side, a ninth place finish. Nybel Jock, first place in the 100 meter hurdles, had to settle for runner up in the 300 meter hurdles. Ruby Demmer doing well in both the one and two mile events. Royal was sixth place in the 200 meter dash. Hayden, eighth place in the discus. Uh, Michaela Wilbur was 10th place in the high jump, and Horton was right behind her in 11th place. Upcoming for the track teams, they are at Armstrong today. Blaine is also there. The Northwest Suburban Conference Championships will be held next Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah, it just shows you how fast this, uh, this season is going. Boys golf team, just one event. We touched on it a little bit last week. They were over at Edinburgh. They call it the Italian Cup, and yep. uh, it is a best ball uh, tournament, teams of two. Uh, the Cardinal team of Tyler Barzness and Gavin DeVries finished first place, finishing at four under. There were a couple of teams tied just one stroke behind. Uh, Cardinals' next best finish was uh, Law and Berg finished fifth place at even par. Bushy and Anderson teamed up to finish seventh at a plus six. And then uh, Andrew Clark and Jackson Barsness finished at a plus nine. So kind of a cool event. Yeah, that's Something cool. Something to shake things up a little bit. Nice job taking first place by those guys. So that, like that, uh, that's too. impressive. Yep. Yeah, when you got two guys who can be relatively consistent yeah. and, and and you're playing best ball, it gives you some really a really good opportunity. But those other teams have have some really consistent players. They do. That in a standard, you know, every man for himself, you know, the Cardinals may not get that first place uh, finish, but together They'll they can get it. it done. They have, uh, I think it's event number six for the Northwest Suburban Conference at Loggers Trail today. Next week, the Northwest Suburban Conference Championships, which will take place at Bunker Hills. Girls golf team getting in a couple of head-to-head -head battles against Northwest Suburban Conference opponents. First against Champlain Park. This was on Tuesday last week. The Cardinals shot a 218. Champlain Park shot a 201. Semensky continues to be the leader, 51 for the day. Good to see Lily McKenzie back in the lineup. Yep. Uh, they've had a couple of girls who have missed some time due to injury. Uh, so good to see them getting back out there to finish the year. Helps uh, add to their team totals. And there you see five girls finishing in the 50s. Uh, and Alt Peter not far behind. On uh, was it was a Thursday. They went. Uh, they took on Centennial and, and roughly the same score, a 219 as a team. Centennial, you can see a very solid 183. Uh, but again, golf's a game where you're in sport where you're competing against yourself as a team. They're staying about even, and there you see it: 53, 54, 55, 56. Uh, the top girls all in that low to mid 50s. Um, they're they're getting closer to getting into those 40s, and and they have a lot of youth. 
uh, on they the do, girls' they, team. They, they, so, re they really do. Uh, boys, really have, do. boys have boys uh, have quite a few seniors in their lineup. They have some youth as well. But not uh, like the girls' but, program. Well, yeah. the nice thing is Law and Berg are both underclassmen for the boys. So yep. they've got a couple of guys that will be right at the top of the leaderboard. Almost all of the, the girls' leaders uh, will be back. And, uh, you know, they still have some time this year. They're at the Andover Invite. Uh, this afternoon, uh, the Legacy Christian Academy invite at North Fork next Monday. Where's that at, Howie? North Fork. There you go. There you go. Practice that one. <laughs> here's some Aki. <laughs> Pretty sure it's here's some Aki, but we, we, we move Either on. Either way. We'll, get, we'll get it right eventually. We know what it's not. We know, it's yeah. not just here's my sake. Yeah, just ask me. We know what it's not. <laughs> oh. Cross team. Last week on Wednesday, the Catbirds hosting the Champlain Park Rebels, and they get doubled up by the Rebels 17 to 8. The final in that one. Burke had a nice evening, two goals to assist. Hazelwood had a couple of goals and a helper, two goals each for Tranby and Herzog, but uh, well behind the pace set by the Stampin' Rebels. Charging Rebels, running Rebels, running, whatever they were running doing. Running Rebels. Yeah. Scoring rebels. They were scoring yep. for sure. On Monday this week, the Cardinals or the Catbirds rather hosting Armstrong, losing that one 19 to 7. Uh, they will have Simley on Thursday and then at Elk River next Monday. And they've only got, I think, three or four total left on their schedule as well. Uh, so there are only two games left. <laughs> As I mentioned that about the boys. <laughs> Only two games left on the regular season schedule for the girls lacrosse team. Cardinals are still looking for win at number one. They've had better offensive production this season, but haven't been able to get over the hump. Last week was a busy one, and it started with a trip to face an Osseo Park Center team. Just one win ahead of them in the conference standings. Cardinals were hopeful heading into the game, but they knew they needed to get their offense going after being held to a single goal against Irondale on Monday. They get a great start. First quarter chance for Annette Abbott is stopped, but Katie Wiggin there to scoop and score on the rebound. The game tied at one. Abbott attacking from the left wing again. She's able to find herself a hole and then fire it past the keeper for the finish. That put the cards on top two to one after one. Carrying momentum into the second, Jenna Berg attacking right down the middle. She loses it as she goes to shoot. It's okay, she dropped it off for Caitlin Easton to finish. Easton's goal gave him a little bit of a cushion. And they add to it again before the break. Abbott scores off the free position. Cardinals go to the half, up four to one. Unfortunately, home team owned the ball in the second half. Allie Olson's goal from a free position tied it at four early in the fourth quarter. Once the OPC squad had the momentum, they kept their foot on the gas. Chloe Hubrid forcing her way down the middle for the goal to give them a 5-4 lead. They add a couple more to make it more convincing. Macy Patton slashing to the middle, firing low for the score. Cardinals fall 7-4, the final in that one. Yeah, tough not to be able to score any goals. Uh, they had scored those four goals to the Cardinals and nothing down the stretch, unfortunately. And they, they dropped. Yeah, they they won they dropped, the first half four to one. Yeah, they did. But then they dropped one to a team they felt they should. They really had a chance to compete with and get to get their first win. Yeah, and for some reason they played them twice. Yeah. In the last week, but uh, in between there they uh, took out Duluth Marshall in a close one against the Hilltoppers, losing eight to five. And then Abbott had a hat trick plus a helper, one goal each for Bowden and Borns. They actually had listed on the on the hub they had six goals listed so i took one of them off and i hope those are the correct goals well, <laughs> or, they, or maybe they lost eight to six i, I uh, do know on uh saturday they did not fare well against southwest christian and southwest christian to be 0. fair very impressive yep. to, like 10 and 0 and they're averaging 17 18 goals per yep. game so that's right about their average yep. um and yeah, it was. Uh, I, I'm assuming that they did not allow the uh, Cardinals to uh, have the ball too often. Uh, Cardinals, uh, as I mentioned, they played Osseo Park Center again on Monday. They fall to 0 11. Katie Wigan had the hat trick for Coon Rapids. Newton, Abbott, and Flynn had the other single scores, but they lose 13 to 6. They host Blaine on Wednesday, and they host Armstrong Cooper next Monday. 
and that will be the regular season finale for them. Yeah, again, you know, they're, they're hoping to see if they can get a win before they close out that regular season. We'll keep our fingers crossed for them that they can get that win or two before they uh, before they have to go to sections. May 16th, which is Thursday this week, will mark two years since their Yikes. last victory. Let's hope they break that. Well, we have uh, stuff coming up for you here. We've got the softball senior night over at uh, Sand Creek against Zimmerman. And then uh, baseball on Wednesday next week against Chisago. That's another night game. And then uh, it's playoff time. It is playoff and time. And we will do as much playoff action as we can uh, get, our, yes. get our hands on. Absolutely. But that's going to do it for this edition of Sports Night. I want to thank everybody out there for joining us and continuing to support everything we do here at CTN. For the entire crew, including Ami Shapiro, I'm Joe Young saying goodnight.